Now, the first technology that we are going to be looking at will be something known as genetic engineering. By definition, genetic engineering merely means that we deliberately change the base sequence of an organism by altering the sequence, removing a gene or adding a gene into the organism. As an example, we have an otter over here and this otter has a genotype of large A, small a, small b, small b. And for example, do not memorize this, the small b alleles have that particular base sequence right there as I'm drawing it out for you. So what happens is, let's say we want to deliberately change the base sequence of the small b allele. We have the technology to do that. What we can do is we can remove the CG base sequence and we can replace it with a TA base sequence in order to convert the recessive allele to make it back into a dominant allele. There can be many reasons why we are doing it, but fundamentally, the, the main thing that we are doing here is we are just changing the base sequence of the alleles in this particular organism, and we do this deliberately. Another example of genetic engineering may also be things like you have a fish over here and you introduce or you give the fish a fluorescent gene. A fluorescent gene is just basically a gene that when expressed, it allows the organism to produce these specific types of proteins and these proteins can allow the organism to glow. So because the fish now has a new gene introduced into its cells, the fish is now fluorescent and it's able to emit light. This is just an example. It does exist, by the way, but this is just a simplistic, a very simplistic approach to what genetic engineering is all about. You are either changing the base sequence of the organism or you are introducing a new gene or sometimes removing a gene from the organism as well. Now, under genetic engineering, I told you that there were two types, recombinant DNA technology and gene editing. We are going to be looking at recombinant DNA technology first. Now, recombinant DNA technology is the technique of producing a DNA by artificially joining pieces of DNA from different species. So you're taking DNA from different species and you're joining it together. That's why it's called recombinant DNA, combined DNA. As an example, as you can see here, we have a regular fish and we just take the embryo out of the fish. Embryo are just basically uh, cells that are produced after the gametes are fertilized here. So the fish, the regular fish, I'm just drawing out two chromosomes and those green lines represent their standard genes that they have. Now, because the embryo is obtained from the fish, the embryo will also have those same chromosomes and the same genes as well, just as a comparison, right? Now, in a jellyfish, a jellyfish may have a gene that we want, and that gene is the fluorescent gene, because certain types of jellyfish, certain species of jellyfish, naturally have this fluorescent gene. Do not memorize this, but they have this fluorescent gene that when the gene is expressed, it allows this jellyfish to glow okay because they're producing these fluorescent proteins so what we do in recombinant dna technology is we take the gene out of the jellyfish and we artificially insert it into the chromosomes in the fish embryo so as you can see that that yellow line that i've put over there in the chromosome that yellow line represents a new gene that has been introduced into the chromosome so when this embryo over here grows and becomes the adult fish, it becomes a genetically modified or GM fish. And that fish is able to express the new gene, the fluorescent gene, and it's able to glow. The reason why it's called recombinant DNA technology is because this chromosome has DNA from the fish naturally and also the jellyfish artificially joined together. So this fish has DNA from itself and also a jellyfish, a different species. That's recombinant DNA technology. Now, some students will then ask, uh, why do we genetically modify the fish to make it glow? Well, 
<laughs> sometimes it can just be for the curiosity purpose of it we want to see that if we introduce these genes into other organisms would they be able to express those foreign genes and will they be able to get new characteristics um, so glow fish or this genetically modified fish that can glow do exist by the way they are referred to as something known as glow fish now they don't glow with the force of like a you know a huge spotlight you cannot take the fish and use it as a torchlight no that's not how it works um, but it's able to emit this very soft little glow that under very specific conditions when you put it in the dark and you shine a little bit of uv light it's able to produce that new characteristic where it's glowing or giving out light now another example of recombinant dna technology would be something like this we have a human and a bacterium over here naturally bacteria cannot produce insulin I mean, why do they need to produce insulin? They don't need to control blood sugar concentration. So they do not have insulin genes. But what we can do is we can take the insulin gene out of the human because they have the insulin gene and we can artificially insert the gene into the bacterium. Now that the bacterium has the gene, it is able to express the insulin gene and when it expresses the insulin gene, it produces the mRNA. mRNA will undergo translation to produce the insulin protein. So this bacterium can now produce insulin proteins. And we can take that insulin out of the bacteria and we can use that insulin to treat people with diabetes. That is just a practical application of recombinant DNA technology. But here's the thing though. Recombinant DNA technology, I mean, it looks easy, right? Because you're just taking the gene out of one organism uh, from the human and then you're just, you know, uh, pushing the gene into the bacteria. But it's not as easy as that, though, okay? Because, you know, obviously there are a lot of steps in between this that we need to consider. So you see, inserting the insulin gene into the bacteria will be quite difficult, by the way. The first thing you need to do is you need to extract the human insulin gene from the humans. So you get one insulin gene like that. The next thing you need to do is you need to produce as many copies as possible of the human insulin gene so that you get identical copies of the gene. Why do you want to produce identical copies of the gene? It's because you want to increase the chances of success in this genetic engineering. It's not as simple as just getting one gene and putting it into the bacterium. The chances of inserting it into the bacterium is actually quite low. In fact, it's about less than 1%. So to increase your chances of success, you need to get as many copies as possible of the gene. Now, it's not just enough to get identical copies of the human insulin gene. You must put the gene into something known as vectors. Now, in chapter 10, Infectious Disease, I told you that vectors are things that carry diseases. In reality, the word vector just means carriers. So when we say we put genes in vectors, we are not putting genes into mosquitoes, okay? That's the vector you learned in chapter 10. These vectors can be other things, but what I just want you to understand is vectors are just carriers to increase the chances of delivering the gene to the bacteria in this case. What are the vectors? I'll talk about those vectors later. So once you put the gene into vectors, you have to try to deliver the gene into the bacteria. I have nine bacteria over here. So we try to deliver the gene in the vector uh, into the bacteria. Did all the bacteria receive the gene though? They didn't. Out of the nine bacteria in this case, only two of the bacteria received the gene. But you as the scientist or the genetic engineer will then have to be able to identify which bacteria have been genetically modified. Now, if you look at the diagram here, you will be like, obviously, those two bacteria are genetically modified. But in reality, when you're looking at the bacteria in the Petri dish, they all look similar. You can't tell for sure which bacteria have received the gene. So there must be a way to identify the bacteria that are genetically modified. So there are four pertinent questions when it comes to recombinant DNA technology. How are the genes obtained or extracted? How do we produce many identical copies? What vectors are commonly used? And how do we identify the genetically modified bacteria or the genetically modified organism in this case?
Now, another example of genetic modification is the production of the hepatitis B vaccine. You don't need to memorize this. Hepatitis B is a disease caused by viruses and to protect people from this virus, we can vaccinate them. And we can also use recombinant DNA technology to produce the vaccines. How do we do that? Number one, we have this hepatitis B virus over here and those red color uh, things on the surface of the virus are known as the antigens. So we extract the antigen gene. We don't take the antigen itself, the protein, but we take the gene from the virus. Number two, we produce many copies of that genes. Number three, we put the genes into vectors or carriers. And number four, we deliver those genes into yeast cells. You don't have to memorize this, but I'm just telling you, we deliver it into yeast cells, not bacteria. We use yeast in this case. And did all the yeast take up the antigen gene? No, out of the nine in this case, only one of the yeast cell took up the gene. You will have to identify which yeast cell has been genetically modified. And in this case, the genetically modified yeast will express the gene. So when it expresses the gene, that means the gene undergoes transcription, mRNA undergoes translation, the yeast itself will start to produce antigens. And we can take those antigens and use them as a vaccine to protect people against the hepatitis B virus. The questions are still the same. How do we extract the gene? How do we produce many copies? What vectors are used? And how are these genetically modified organisms identified? That is what we have to know for recombinant DNA technology.